everyone, welcome back to my channel, Sharon Cullen Art. Today I'm going to be painting some chickadees and I'll be doing that in watercolor. This is a picture of the painting. Well, this is the painting, not a picture of it. Um, <laughs> but anyway, this is the one I will be doing today. It was actually taken from a photo that was a winter scene and I didn't feel like doing any more snow. I've had snow up the wazoo, although it rained overnight and everything is turning green around here. There's plants popping up. The ferns are unfurling from the ground, which means in just like two weeks, they're gonna be full and everything, the whole blanket of green is gonna be on my property again. And I can't wait, you guys. I'm so excited for spring. And last year it was cold too, so I'm hoping this isn't a habit, but I think it will be because when I remember coming here, uh, when my husband and I were dating and we would go camping and stuff, um, we would come up like Memorial Weekend and Memorial Weekend could be sunny and 70 or it could be freezing cold. The nights were always cold. It would get down into the 40s at night. So I've got a feeling that I just need to get used to spring coming late around here, but I'm so happy it's here. I'm just, I'm loving it. Right, let's get on with the chickadee painting. That's why I had to do spring instead of winter. I love winter in November, December, and January, but then after that, bring me spring. But no, in Michigan we get November, December, January, February, March, April. It's like six months long. And then May comes, and I'm like, please green, please come, please come, please come. And then by September, the leaves are changing. But I love it here. I get all four seasons, and it's just absolutely wonderful. And to be honest, I'd rather have the cold than the stifling heat where you have to be inside all the time because it's too hot to be out and you'll dehydrate and you wither like a little wet noodle. I can't handle that, not with my autoimmune issues. The cold is hard on my arthritis, yes, but I can bundle up and I can go outside and I can have some fun in the snow where I wouldn't do that if I was in 120 degree heat in Arizona or something like that. So I love it here. But anyway, I'm done babbling. Oh, no, I'm not. Wait, 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 wait. I got some things today. <laughs> I got some things today. I got two more paint colors. I got Hansa Yellow Light, which I really didn't need because then I found permanent yellow light from Shinhan PWC, and it's almost the same color. Well, it's a little bit darker. And this one I've been wanting for a while. Halo yellow green. Did you like the sound effects? <laughs> Let me put a little dab on paper and I'll show you what they look like. Okay, let me just put them on there. This is what they look like. Aren't they beautiful? That's the phthalo yellow green and then this is the Hansa yellow light. And uh, ignore that, I was just practicing with paint lines the other day because my hands were so shaky so I kept lowering my brush size as I got smaller and smaller and uh, practicing my line work because sometimes my I get out of the lines and it drives me crazy and I think part of it is just getting old. The other thing I got today was uh, I've been wanting to try one of these for years because I've heard mixed reviews I always went against them and I didn't use them Normally, when I put, use masking fluid, I'll use like a shaper, one of these silicone shapers. You can buy them in different sets. But I like the pointy one, and I use this instead of a brush. But sometimes it's hard to control the line. And I love PBO. PBO Drawing Gum is my favorite. And I like that it's blue because the blue um, dries and shows up on my paper, and I always know where it is. I don't like clear. But anyway, this one is the Molotov. Um, one and it's the fine point pen so and it's refillable so I like that because then once this comes down I can unscrew the cap fill it up with more of my PBO and then I still have this to use I was watching somebody use it recently and she got such a fine line I can't remember who it was maybe Maria Rosenska I'm not sure if it was her no maybe not she she usually uses a brush. Anyway, I got this and I'm gonna try it. But let's get going with the chickadees. So let's get rolling. Oh wait, there's one more thing. For those of you who won the gouache, 
Can you see over my shoulder right there? Those are your packages, all ready to go. I've got them all in envelopes. They're all set and ready to go to the post office. You should be getting them next week, all of those of you. All of those of you. All of you who won will be getting them next week. So I hope you're excited. Okay, here I'm just putting water down in the black areas and I'm going in with some light Payne's gray. I wanna start with a wash of gray that will be fairly light when it dries, and then I can build on that. So then I'll, I'll add a little more black and add a little more black until it gets to the darkness that I'm looking for. Now here you're going to see me dab with a gummy eraser to lift some of the lines so they're not so dark. But then I have to draw something back in. I don't know if it was for the eye. Yeah, I think it was for the eye. And now I'm going ahead and doing the same thing on each of the other chickadees. On the back end of the middle one there, it looks a little odd because part of his wing and his tail come together so you'll be it'll be defined at the end and it's going to look like I'm screwing it up but as I add the layers you'll see it come together. Now I'm going in with a little bit darker gray. I'm using Payne's Blue Gray by Daniel Smith and just adding a little bit more of that. When I get to the end stages of the painting, I believe I use a little bit of lunar black on top of it just to give it a little more richness in the black color. But I wanted it to look reflective, like the light was shining off of little areas of the feathers. So I had to keep those light gray in some spots. And now when you go back over them, you've got to make sure that you're not covering up all of it. It's It can be difficult to do because you just want to keep adding a little more knowing that their heads are black, but leaving that translucent color there really helps to add depth to the feathers. Now, if you get to the end of it and you find that, oops, I've made it all black and it doesn't look right, you could take a little bit of gouache or a white gel pen maybe, although gel pens are not light fast, so over time they will fade. But if you use a little white ink or a little white gouache, you can even mix it, mix a little bit of gray into it just so that it's not so stark white and uh, put that on if you've made it too dark. Now after going over the birds again, now I'm, I'm going back in with wetting some areas of the chest and adding in some yellow ochre. And in one little edge, I added a little bit of red and that was um, quinacridone coral, trying to keep it on the warmer side. And it's very pale. It doesn't even look red, but it just adds some richness to the yellow ochre that I put in on the chest. And then I soften the edges by taking my wet brush and running along the center edge, you saw me do there, so that it doesn't have a hard edge into the white chest area. I'm continuing to soften edges here. Now it's very pale, but you'll see me wetting here and I've added a little bit of gray to the chest. Just a very little bit. It's more like shadowing. On this one, it's more of feather look. And then this one has kind of a, an indentation there in his chest. Now I'm going ahead and adding the eyes in. In that first layer, I left the outer circle light gray 
And now I'm just putting the pupil in the center of the eye, leaving a little bit of a gray circle around the outside. And as I add black to the head, that little gray circle will remain so that the, the eye remains defined. On the beaks, there's a little bit of a reflection on the top. One of them is pretty white. I believe it's the middle one. And then the others are more of a lighter gray color. So I'm trying to leave that on the beak so that it has some reflection. I'm going to have to start taking notes because I can't remember how what colors I used to mix for the feet. I may have used quinacridone magenta with some of my Payne's Blue Gray to kind of make the feet a little bit more violet colored. On the leaves, I'm just using some sap green, occasionally uh, different values. And at one point, I think I used a little bit of the lemon yellow on that in order to lighten the leaves up. Here on the branches I start out with some Piemonite Genuine by Daniel Smith and then I will also go over it and drop in some Hematite Genuine. Once I get that nice and wet, I want it a little bit extra wet, I'm going to go back in and I want my values fairly dark because I'm going back in with salt and I'm gonna sprinkle salt over the branches and that will add a lot of texture to it. Now I've turned my paper here just to get a better angle for wetting it down before I drop in a sky. Someone once said to me, you're not supposed to turn your paper. You're not a true artist if you, unless you keep your paper straight up and down. That's what I was taught. I'm sorry, you guys. There are no rules to watercolor. There are basic rules for color, but as far as watercolor goes, do whatever the heck makes you happy. And if it turns out great, that's awesome. Why would I keep my paper straight if it's going to make my lines less clean? You're going to do whatever makes your painting better, correct? Hmm. I wonder who taught her that. I also wanted to let you know that in the cloudy areas of the sky, 
I did add just a hint of yellow ochre in a few places, just for some color harmony because I use the yellow ochre in the birds. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and take the salt off of the branches here. I'm just going to wipe it away. <clears throat> and then I can go back and finish the detail on my... Whoops, I got paper towel stuck on there. I can finish the detail on my birds. I love the way the salt looks when you use a granulating paint on the branches. Piemonite and hematite are both granulating colors, so putting them both down added a little more dimension to the branches, and then putting the salt on top of it has helped to make them look even more realistic. Let me give you a close-up shot here. I can get one. You can see how it granulated, and then the salt also did its work and it makes whoops sorry about that I dropped you guys and then that made the branches look even more real I'm having trouble getting it to focus now there we go and I'll be I'm gonna add some little things winging out here where my where my uh, watercolor bled a little bit that's not an issue this was actually a winter photo that I used for reference, and I'm making it a spring painting. I didn't care to do any more snow. I'm so tired of snow around here. Here I've gotten out my white ink and I'm just adding a little bit to draw some white up into the black areas of the feathers and also a little bit on the chests. Some of the areas were gray and I wanted to whiten a little bit more of that up. Okay, now here I am going to add some shadowing under the leaves in certain areas where they've overlapped. So I'm putting the color down and then I'm softening the edge by going back and adding a little bit of water along the edge. And now I'm gonna go back to that area that bled. I'm sorry, I bumped my camera there. And I'm going to add some little twigs and knots in order to fix those areas and see so you don't even notice anymore.
Now I'm going to go ahead and add some veining into all the leaves. It doesn't have to be every single leaf, every single vein. I just scatter them in so that it gives the appearance of the veins without making that a focal point in the painting. You want your focus to be on the birds, not on the leaves, so I just barely add them. What I'm doing now is I'm taking some of that Payne's Blue Gray and I'm adding some feathers off the edges of the black area just so that it looks a little more realistic. And then I like to have a few poking up off of their foreheads and on their beards. Here I'm going in and I'm defining the upper and lower beaks. Now basically here I'm going through each bird and defining the feathers on the wings and adding some shadowing. I want to go ahead and darken up the underside of these branches where they would be seen with shadow. So I'm going back in with I believe I was using some of the Hematite Genuine, but I may have been using some of the Payne's Blue Gray just to darken the underside of those. Then I'm going to go ahead and add a little more dark value underneath the bird's bellies just to add shadow there. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you receive notification of all my upcoming videos, and uh, like this video if it was helpful to you, and leave me a comment down below. And remember everyone, be courageous, paint with wild abandon, but most of all, be kind to each other. Take care.